<clears throat> it's uh, after nine now, so Jerry, let's go ahead and get the meeting started. I, I didn't realize it was either. We were talking, and then all of a sudden I realized, oh, it's 901. So we'll call the meeting to order. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, for those who are in the audience, just so you know that there's an agenda on the back bookshelf if you'd like to get one if you haven't <coughs> received one for today. Uh, <clears throat> Jerry looks like everyone here except for Bill at this point in time, so we'll, we know that he might be here a little bit late, but just in case. So, And to take that on the roll. Um, approval of February 26 minutes. Did everybody get a chance to review those? And is there any corrections or edits to those minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So moved and seconded by Lori. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Approval of today's agenda. Is there anything wrong with today's agenda? Do we want to move anything at this point in time? If not, I'd entertain a, a motion to approve. I'll move approval. I'll second. Stand. Motion a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, consent agenda, PJ. Hi. Morning. Good morning. PJ kind of a director of planning department. Uh, consent agenda. The following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by one planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this planning commission are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make final decisions. Item three, conditional use permit 1218 for Paul and Don Marceau to review a vacation home rental in the suburban residential district. Staff recommends to continue the review of conditional use permit 1218 to the April 9th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Item four, conditional use permit review 1704 for Zane Vollmer to review a single wide mobile home to be used as a single family residence on the subject property in a general agricultural district. Staff recommends to end conditional use permit 1704 with the applicant's concurrence. Item five, conditional use permit review 1705 for Delmar and Melissa Nelson to review a vacation home rental on the subject property in a, in a general agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1705 with 16 conditions. Item six, conditional use permit review 1706 for CLSD LLC Rosenbaum Signs Agent as the agent to review two internally illuminated signs located on existing sign structures within 1,500 feet of a residential zoning district or dwelling unit in the highway service district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1706 with six conditions. Item seven, construction permit review for road construction CP 1708 for Dan and Nancy Evangelisto, Summer Creek Road District, to review the installation of a culvert and water line on the north end of the Summer Creek Drive. Uh, to improve portions of Siskin Loop and Carbon Loop and grade and maintain other existing roads within the district. Staff recommends to end construction permit 1508. Number eight, construction permit review for Summer Creek Inn CP 1509 for Dan and Nancy Evangelisto, Summer Creek Inn, to review grading and leveling an area of a hillside for lots 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15 in order to construct a build, uh, for the construction of building on lots 10 and 12 to stockpile material on other lots, which would be lot 27 between lots 34 and 35 on the property, and to level and grade an area for an overflow parking on lot, 20, on lot 45. Staff recommends to end construction permit 1509. Item nine, layout plat 1738 for Dorothy Johnson Estates. Great Western Bank is the personal representative for Dorothy Johnson Estates to create lots A, B, C, and D of Johnson Estates subdivision. Staff recommends to continue layout plat 1738 to the April 23rd, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Item 10, rezone 1710 and comprehensive plan amendment 1709 for Dorothy Johnson Estates, Great Western Bank personal representative for Dorothy Johnson Estates to rezone 21.39 acres from limited agriculture district to suburban residential district and to amend the Pennington County comprehensive plan to change the future land use from PUD sensitive to suburban residential district. Staff recommends to continue rezone 1710 and comprehensive plan amendment 1709 to the April 23rd, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Item 11, major plan unit development amendment 1801 for Deerfield, Deerfield Cabins LLC, Dion, Wien, Wien, um, sorry, Dion as the agent to amend the existing plan unit development to allow the existing single family residence on lot 43 to be used as a vacation home rental on the subject property. Staff recommends to continue Major Plan Unit Development Amendment 1801 to the May 14, 2018 Planning Commission meeting with two conditions. 
Item 12, layout plat 1803, Kerry and Sabrina Johnston, to combine three lots in order to create lot one of Johnston subdivision. Uh, staff recommends to continue layout plat 1803 to the March 26, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. And item 13, vacation of easement 1705 for Kerry and Sabrina Johnston to vacate a portion of the existing easement, a 16-foot wide private roadway located on the interior of lots 20, 21, and 22 of lot 1 of the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter. South recommends to continue the vacation of easement 1705 to the March 26, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Thank you, PJ. <clears throat> Would staff like to pull any items? 12 and 13 for updates. <clears throat> 12 and 13 for updates. Would anybody on the board like to pull any items off the consent agenda? Audience members, all those items that were just read, those are all consent agenda items. We're going to re, we're going to take one vote on all of them. So if there's one that you would like removed off of that consent agenda, please come forward and let us know. Seeing none, that leaves our consent agenda with items 3 through 18, and then 12 and 13 have been added to our regular agenda. So our consent agenda is 3 through 11. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Motion is second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. That takes us to item number 12. Thank you. Thank you. Frank Waseth, Planner 2. Uh, this is for item 12 and 13, layout plat and vacation of easement. Um, it's pulled for, to update uh, the applicants. Um, since the time of the writing of the original staff report, the applicants have joined the Homeowners Association for Custer Trails Road, which has an easement from the Forest Service. Oops. Uh, for um, access to the road in the in section for the private properties in section 14. Um, by joining the Homeowners Association, they now have legal access on the private road to their property. Um, so that's why it's been pulled in and provided the conditions recommended to, uh, provided to you this morning. So this is just the new recommendations from staff? Yeah, just to update on the recommendation since it wasn't available um, at the time of writing for the original staff report. Okay. Any questions for staff? Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead, Rich. Do we have any um, meeting uh, issues knowing that it was advertised to be continued? And I, I think what I'm understanding now is the we're recommending approval. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and has staff uh, received any questions or comments regarding this item prior to the meeting? Um, no, uh, I discussed this with um, a uh, representative from the Custer Trails uh, Road or Homeowners Association, which um, kind of controls the road and, uh, as I mentioned, has uh, the easement granted from the Forest Service. Uh, they were the only ones, only ones, to my knowledge, that had issue with uh, the applicants using this road um, before they had access. Um, haven't had any other complaints or comments regarding this uh, item. Any further questions? Hmm. Any questions from the audience? All right, I see none. PJ, do you have something? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. It still does need to be continued um, as the way it was advertised. Um, you're correct. But uh, um, we would eventually <coughs> recommend approval with these uh, conditions that were provided this morning. So the current recommendation is to continue it. Is that correct? Yes. And that's what you'd like to continue it, but with these? Yeah. All right. So recommend to re continue. Move to continue 12 and 13. Motion to continue. Do you do you need a separate motion for each one? Or can we do them together? Separate items. Okay. Yeah. Separate items. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a motion to continue item 12. Is there a second? A second. second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Move item. to continue number 13. Item 13 is moved to continue. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Takes us to item number 14. Item 14 is minor plat 18. 
02 to reconfigure lot lines in order to create lot tracks 30, rev uh, revised 2, track 32, revised 2, and track 40, revised 2 of <coughs> Rushmore Ranch Estates question. Uh, the applicants are Tom and Ann Slaughter, surveyors and uh, engineer John Arleth, and all are in the audience today if you have any questions. This was before you as a layout plat some time ago. They're consolidating, uh, looking to consolidate these four lots into three lots. Uh, three of the four lots have single family residence on them, garages, um, approved access points. Um, the one lot in the middle to the west of the section line is actually uh, being absorbed be with the two lots that are on either side of it, east and west. So uh, they're kind of taking almost half of each of that. Um, recently, and on March 6th, the Board of Commissioners vacated portions of the section line um, outlined here in red. Whoops, this is way off here. Not <laughs> kind of finagle a little bit right here. Um, there was a garage that was built within the 33 foot on the east side of the section line. Um, part of the reason for the vacation was to fix that problem. Um, but also it was, it was listed as a 66 foot wide access point to the United States Forest Service. Forest Service has no um, documentation on an approved access at that point. And actually for, um, access is taken off of the 20 foot um, access and water line easement further to the to the west that goes up towards that water tank lot. Um, Forest Service has no had no objections to the vacation of the easement and hasn't stated any objection to the layout plant or the minor plant at this time. Um, a couple of other items that came back for the request for comment was from equalization and register of deeds that some of the title um, information was missing, the township and range, but that has since um, from the latest copy of the plat that we got has been um, included. Uh, the United States Forest Service, this was uh, originally before the conversations that we had with Rodney Brown, our contact. He wanted to see the documentation that gave them the access through that 66 foot wide access easement and um, has since um, agreed that it, he's okay if it comes off of their plat since they don't, rec since Forest Service doesn't recognize it anyway. It's more of the private landowner's responsibility and concern. So they may actually choose to take it off the plat since it was created with the plat and register of deeds had stated that they don't have any objection to that at this time. Um, the applicant's request would decrease density in the Rushmore Ranch uh, State Subdivision and staff would recommend approval of minor plant 1802 with 12 conditions. Thank you very much, PJ. Any questions for staff? All right. Any questions from the audience? Any uh, public like to speak on this item? All right, seeing none. Current recommendation, staff recommends approval of minor plat 1802 with the following 12 conditions. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move to approve minor plat um, 1802 with 12 conditions. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, takes us to item Thank 15. You. Item 15 is layout plat 1801 and subdivision regulation variance 1801 to combine two lots to create lot 31 revised in block E of MS 1016, Idlewise Mountain Development, and to waive some planning requirements. The applicant is uh, Idlewise Mountain Lodge, and the surveyor and agent is Fisk Land Surveying, and there is a, a representative from Fisk Land Surveying in the audience today if you have any questions. The applicant's uh, Idlewise Mountain Lodging has requested to consolidate existing lot 31 and 32 in Block E uh, into lot 31 revised of Block E in Idlewise Mountain Development. The consolidation will decrease density in Idlewise by one lot and create a lot that will be approximately 1.37 in uh, acres in size. Currently, the property, uh, e each individual property is not over one acre. Lot 31, which is the lot uh, to the southeast is 0.84 acres, uh, currently zoned suburban residential district, and that is the current and future land use. There is an existing uh, cabin on the property that was built in 1996 through a, a building permit. There was a residential addition, a deck, in 2013. The cabin used to have a valid conditional use permit for a vacation home that was granted in 2012. In 2016, the conditional use permit, which is 1223, was ended um, on October 10, 2016, with the applicant's concurrence. Uh, do, 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 do. There was a lot size variance request in 2017. 
and the applicant was looking to allow a vacational rental on a lot less than one acre. <clears throat> As you know, Section 319 now has that requirement of a minimum of one acre or you have to get a lot size variance. That request was denied by the Board of Commissioners. Um, this entire, pro the entire subdivision was platted in 1975 via plat book 14, page 15. And one of the unusual things about Idlewise and especially these two lots is instead of the eight foot minor drainage utility easements, these have 10 foot, which is why you'll see the wording in the recommendations that a minimum of eight feet be required. So if they wanna go bigger than that, we don't have a problem with that. The other lot to the Northwest, lot uh, 32 is 0.56 acres, also suburban residential district, current and future zoning, and is vacant of any structures, and also platted in 1975 with a 10 foot wide minor drainage utility easement. The applicants are looking to waive subdivision regulation variance for any additional road improvements and design standards for SRD zoning for Munich Lane and Heidelberg Lane per section 500.5 of the Pennington County Subdivision Regulation, including turnarounds and dead-end road systems. Staff does not object to the request for the waivers as submitted as residence is already existing and the density is being decreased on the roadway. Staff would note, however, that future subdivisions and existing lots in the entire subdivision may be, may be subject to Pennington County Subdivision Regulations, uh, mainly because we're looking at a dead-end road system Again, platted in 1975, that is over the two mile limit for the 40 unit rule, and also has uh, well over 40 units. I think we're up into the 70s now. The last residence that we can find that was platted, or that was allowed in this residence was early 2013. Haven't been any new uh, residents in this area since then that we're aware of. This was routed through the interpartmental review. Register Adija just mentioned that on one of the drawings, lot 31 and 32 are on the wrong lots. Um, so that's a, that's a quick fix. And the owner's certificate needs a notary acknowledgement for um, a corporation, not for an individual. And as far as analysis, uh, the applicant's request, again, would decrease density of Idlewise Mountain Development by one lot. Uh, this part of Idlewise Mountain Development was platted in 1975 and is part of a larger dead-end road system. Um, with all that, staff would recommend approval of layout plat 1801 with 10 conditions, and there will be a separate motion for the subregs. All right. <clears throat> separate motion. Any questions for staff? Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Um, PJ, are there any vacant lots in yes, the there are. So um, on these two particular dead end roads, are there vacant lots? I believe there's a couple, yes. That will be developed? I don't know if they will be. Um, but that's when we so, would expect to require the turnaround and the egress. If somebody's looking to subdivide. So why not do it now? Just curious. We felt the app, I felt the applicant was decreased density, making the situation not as big of a problem. And it was platted back in 1975. They're not looking to put a unit on there. Okay. And so, and what this applicant would have to do is create an entirely new ingress and egress. So not was, just do the turnaround. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Mark. PJ. Sir. Is there any possibility this is going to wind up running us into the same problem we had with the Brasky Road developments? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Any audience member like to speak on this item? Seeing none. Mr. Chair, I have Go ahead, one. Rich. Uh, it looks to me that um, back in the day, this Bavarian Drive was planted to the northwest. Is that just a dead end road? Does it not go anywhere? It looks like at one Which time one? it was maybe Vienna. planned to connect. Which one? Bavarian Drive. Which one you're looking at? I'm sorry. Yeah. Keep scrolling through your okay. handouts there. <clears throat> oh, here? Nope. It's, up one. It's up one. Up, yeah. up left. Up, left, left, left. 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 Down. Down. Right. Left. Left. <laughs> right oh, there. Bavarian. That's Bavarian. <laughs> Bavarian. Um, from everything that we can tell, everything just stops. Uh, there was no. It, it doesn't look like any plan for. We haven't looked on that side of the subdivision that closely at that road. So could find some additional information on that one, but it's just a dead end road system again. The same as what Commissioner DeSanto had brought up, the Bratsky Road issue. There. These aren't the only two. And it's not the main concern with this one. I just put that in there as a point of fact. But this helps eliminate some of the issues we, I mean, this is 
reducing density as opposed to Caskey out there. It's it not. is, and that seems to be the trend, at least in Idlewise, for the last year and a half. Uh, since the one-acre rule in Section 319 verification home rentals were put in, a lot of lots in Idlewise have been consolidated to meet that one-acre minimum, and since then, those lots have requested a conditional use permit for vacation homes. Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead, Lori. Do you know how many homes in Edelweiss are vacation homes, just roughly? Uh, I think we have a rough number. Is it? 40. Like more than half? Yes. Because you said there's 70 some 76, I, I have it right here. Let okay. me see. So more than half are vacation homes. 75 address points, so that would be our residential. This is 123 tax parcels, so you're looking at a little less than 50 vacant lots. Okay. Yep. Mr. Chair. Van Mark. Question for Michelle. Michelle. <clears throat> Since this causes uh, a possible necessity of adding egress and ingress, um, is it possible that this is going to open us up to further litigation if somebody decides they want to build out there another home and then we have to tell them there's, we're over the 40 unit rule and kind of basically, like I said, the same thing we're going on with Bratsky Road. Are we going to wind up in that same argument? Michelle Hoffman, State's Attorney's Office. I do not believe so because as PJ, Mr. Conover noted, they're actually not seeking a building permit and they're simply seeking to consolidate these two lots, which would in fact decrease the density. I understand that, but I'm talking that does this, does this particular um, applicant, is, are they going to be the cause of having to create means of ingress and egress, or no, they're not? In other words, if we deny this, any future building is still going to need a second egress and ingress, right? A building? If, if, if in the future... Uh -huh. There's other places that are planted for building out there. Am I correct? What was that, uh, what was that question again? There's other lots that are planted currently that are not built on. Correct. And therefore, but this particular approval is not going to make it so that it's not. In other words, if we didn't approve this, future building permits that are going to get issued out there are going to have to, uh, would have to, create a second egress and ingress anyway, correct? These have already been platted. So that issue, the issue that you're referencing in terms of Bransky Street Road um, exists whether you consolidate these two lots or not. And furthermore, um, if you don't consolidate, then arguably you'll have two people coming in and seeking to build on, is it 31 and 32? Yes, correct. Third, you could have an applicant to build on 31 and an applicant to build on 32. Okay. And really, so, but in this case, by consolidating, you're most likely going to have a single. That answer. answers my question. I was just looking at whether or not we're opening ourselves up to further liability. So, thank you. As, as a footnote, the reason that was put in there is because of what has happened recently with the Bratsky Road issue. The this development and the stuff off of Bratsky are not the only two in the county. Oh, yeah. And I think there needs to be future maybe discussion at the board level of what the board wants to do when building permit applications do come in. If a building permit comes in for one of the vacant lots in Idlewise, it will be before the board again. Right. Gotcha. But um, then staff still recommends approval of a layout plat with 10 conditions. Thank you, PJ. There's a young lady who'd like to speak behind you there. Good morning. My name is Janelle Fink. I'm with Fiscal Hand Surveying. We're the agents on behalf of the McKaylee's or Idlewise Mountain Development. And I just wanted to offer a comment that there have been several plats recently. We actually did two with, within last year where they were consolidating lots and decreasing density. And both of those were approved without any regard, you know, concern, I guess, or note of 
the dead end road system. And it's possible that it should have been noted at that time. But is historically we've seen that when you're decreasing density that that's been seen as a positive step. And the residences that are out there do not trigger when you come in for a building permit on an existing platted lot. That does not trigger your subdivision Correct. regulation variance. Correct. So okay. any of those existing platted lots, somebody comes in, applies for a permit, they receive that permit, and it doesn't come to this body, and it doesn't trigger that 40-unit rule on existing platting. They're grandfathered in. Very good. Thank you. All right. Any further questions from staff? Yep. Move for approval. Any further uh, individuals from the audience that would like to come speak? Seeing none, the current recommendation is to approve. I think I did hear someone starting. A second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, is that for SV 1801 or is that for PL 1801? They have to be separate, correct? They do have to be separate. Um, Mark, the one that I was oh. recommending for the layout plat 1801, is that correct? That's, That's correct. correct. Okay. 1801. Does that clarify, Rich? Yeah, but do we have to do the variance first? No, there's the conditions matter. in the in there that reference the variance. All right. So, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So it's just one. We don't have to do two separate on this one then. <coughs> two separate. One for the plat. One for the subregs. Gotcha. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Same sign. Motion carries. And then for the subregs. And staff recommend approval of subdivision regulation variance 1801. And I'll move approval of that recommendation. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. That takes us to 16, item number 16. Good morning, Brittany Molitor, Environmental Planning Supervisor. Item 16 is a conditional use permit request. Uh, 1801 to allow for a temporary uh, to allow a temporary permit for retail sales of Class C fireworks. Uh, currently, as it stands now, this lot is zoned general commercial. It consists of 0.83 acres. It is provided with public water and sewer through Rapid Valley Sanitary District. Um, there was a conditional use permit prior to this in 1984 that allowed for a storage facility on the property. Um, that since um, use is not used anymore, currently it's being used as a used car sales. Um, there are um, various um, structures on that property for the use of used car sales. Um, this was routed through the interdepartmental review and there was no major items of concerns that came back. Uh, the biggest one was from our highway department that did wanted to make clear that there was no parking allowed in the rights of way along Jolly Lane and school drive. Um, there are considerations for a conditional use permit. Um, the first one is the effect upon the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the use is already permitted and upon property values within the immediate vicinity. Um, the proposed conditional use for the temporary sale of fireworks in existing buildings should not have significant effect upon the use and enjoyment of other properties in the immediate vicinity um, as there are other commercial uses across the street on School Drive off of Highway 44. Uh, the effect upon the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding vacant property. Um, considering the surrounding land uses have several commercial businesses currently operating daily, the temporary fireworks sales should have little effect on the development or improvement of the surrounding properties. Net utilities, access roads, drainage, and other necessary facilities are provided. All necessary public utilities exist on the property, and due to the temporary use or due to the temporary use nature of fireworks sales in an existing building, no additional utilities should be necessary and that the off-street parking and loading requirements are met. It appears that the area around the commercial building is already graveled and is leveled to provide parking and measures are taken to control offensive odor, fumes, dust, noise, vibration, and lighting. Um, the proposed conditional use does have potential to produce odor, dust, and noise. All of these could potentially be offensive offensive to the surrounding property owners, however, considering the surrounding land uses, it is unlikely that the temporary fireworks sales will adversely affect the surrounding landowners. So staff is recommending approval of conditional use permit 1801 with 11 conditions. And just one to note is that condition 11 is that it would be reviewed at the May 14, 2018 Planning Commission meeting as the applicant has not applied for licenses with the state yet as he wanted to ensure that the conditional use permit would be approved first or any concerns from the Planning Commission be addressed. All right, thank you. Any questions for Brittany? Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead, Laura. Um, we don't have a legend on this map. Oh. The pink is the pink stand commercial. What's the light yellow? 
I'm assuming the orange is suburban <clears throat> residential. The light yellow is city limits. Oh. It's rapid city city limits. So anything that's yellow is inside the city limits? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Mark. Brittany, was there any concern from the fire safety on this? Because right across the street, basically, we've got um, large scale fireworks going off during that season mm -hmm. at the at the racetrack and quite often pieces of burning material land on the ground when those fireworks go off and I'm, to have a tent right across the street full of more fireworks any concern from the fire department on that? Um, I did not receive any comments. However, as part of the licensing requirements through the state, they do have to have the fire marshal do the inspection to receive that license. Okay. So, I'm not. All right. Sorry, this is Thank that. you, Commissioner. My name is Ron Weifenbach from, I live in Rapid at 4153 Augusta Drive. I'm here to answer any questions. And we've went extensively through the stipulations that are there. We have no problem meeting them. Uh, most of the cars will be removed from the... Uh, area there it's a slow time of year for a car season our the peak season for cars is right now it's winding down so there'll be very few cars we'll have uh, obviously we want to be good neighbors and it behooves us to 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 make sure the traffic flows through there correctly anyway to be able to allow people to shop freely and come and go freely so we'll be on site to, to handle that and then any of the concerns actually this is a metal building that these fireworks will be in so it's the big large metal building that's in the middle so it's not like a tent so okay. I mean, I, i've seen the tents and it, we're not going to have that issue if something did fall down that the, and hit the building it would, it would just roll off the building so yeah we've, we've tried to address everything and i'm here to uh, you know address any questions that you guys have and reassure you that uh, you know we're we've improved the property over the years i was the previous owner of the property and the property owner that has it now neither one of us ever received any complaints on anything that we've ever done there and that it, it used to be a storage facility slash car lot and now it's just a, a car lot all the storage units are moved out um so that's really about it and we will have a porta potty on site because I just think that's be good. You know, we're trying to keep it conspicuous, and it's only going to be for the period of time that allows that that to happen. And then the reason I don't have the the, the state permit is because I didn't. I wanted to make sure that you guys were good with everything before I went and spent five hundred dollars for a, a state permit. So we'll bring that back at that time and allow you guys to review it. All right. Any questions for Ron, Mr. Chair? Yes, Ron, go ahead, Mark. You haven't. You haven't received any concern from the neighborhood on School Drive as far as traffic and that kind of stuff? Absolutely nothing. Zero. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? <coughs> Mr. Chair. <coughs> yes. And you will remove the cars. I'm looking at the picture here and, and then your plan. Yeah, if you, if you look now, if you look at the Google map, you'll see the, the Google map pictures. There's a lot less there. And this morning, there's a lot less than that even. So most entirely, most of them will be gone. Not entirely. There'll be some on the sides. Um, but not in the front. Everything will be cleared out of there. So, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Um, do you guys sell fireworks during New Year's or just during 4th of July? Just during 4th of July. I was told tonight that there's a possibility that there's a small window in December, but if we did something like that, we would come back and amend that with you guys. Okay. So, But it's just a small window. I think it's like the 27th through the 4th. or yeah. The numbers are in there. Okay. In here. I'm not exactly sure. Thanks. Yes, Kathy. German, yep. Um, what about signage? What do you intend to do for signs? We haven't approached that yet. Anything we do for signage has to come back to you guys to get sign permits. So I'm assuming we'll have a, a large sign that says what we're doing and probably attach it over the top of the signs that are there. But we would have to get those all permitted, anything we did with the sign. Okay. So that would be a whole separate issue. Mm -hmm. So and, and then again, they would be just for that window of yeah. that time frame. That's it. So... All right. Nothing permanent. Any further questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Any further questions for staff? Seeing none, the recommendation is recommend approval of conditional use permit CU 1801 with the following 11 conditions. Uh, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Takes us to item 17.
Item 17 is an ordinance amendment to amend section 204J3P requirements for on site wastewater treatment systems. The reason for this proposed uh, ordinance amendment is because the National Environmental Health Association no longer provides certification for on site wastewater treatment installers. So um, we felt that we needed to remove it from our ordinance if they don't allow that. Um, I do have a couple. There are some other wordsmithing um, in the proposed text that I'd like to propose, um, if that's okay. If there's any other questions. Any questions for Brittany at this point? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Just a point of curiosity. The, um, the eight-hour installer education course that um, is still required, uh, who provides that? We do. All the county. county staff puts it together, and then the installers pay for it and attend it. We have <coughs> trainers come in typically from University of Minnesota. I didn't put here. Oh, you typically, we have trainers come in from University of Minnesota. I see. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions, Brittany? Did, so all this in red is what you wrote in, just to kind of cover what was um, deleted. Is that correct? Correct. correct. And then um, there is a couple wordsmithing um, under the proposed text on page two on II. Um, instead of saying has received certification, is certified by, just so all the tenses stay the same in those lines. Okay. Recommending that. And then on number four here, um, it'd be attend. So add an S to attend and then completes approved. So add the word approved, continuing education credits. And then again, under certification renewal, on, under II, complete approved continuing education credits. Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Lori. Brittany, so people can um, can get this certification other places in other states, and they, they could just bring the certificate to you and show that they have they have the proper credentials? If they take other courses, I know Minnesota and Colorado both have pretty extensive courses that they could take. Um, that's why we had changed it to the planning director, because we're aware even our staff has attended some of those. So mm -hmm. um, those are ones that we would typically recommend for approval. And that particular training, is it good for a certain period of time and then they have to go to refresher? Is it good for forever or how, how does that work? Um, this would be for every two years. So they to take eight hours every two years. I know some state certifications are different, but we allow them to do those in other states or in Colorado or Minnesota if they want to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Any audience members like to address item 17? Hello, my name is Tina Mullally. I'm from Rabbit Valley. Um, I do have a, a question about the ordinance amendment. Um, can you tell me how many times this was advertised for this um, ordinance amendment? Yes, three weeks. Three weeks. And can you show me in the ordinance on, I could only find in the ordinance that it's only required for ordinance amendments to be advertised one time. Can you show me the statute on that? Um, yeah, it's followed under the, any, in our zoning ordinance, it, there is language where, for ordinance amendments, rezones and stuff follow like state statutes where it's once for planning commission and two weeks in a row for um, board of commissioners. So it's three weeks before it even gets to the planning commission. So one time, three weeks before the planning commission meeting? No, um, once for, there's language for planning commission. Right. Once um, for um, planning commission and then two weeks in a row after that for county board. Um, it's, so it's three weeks in a row before it even gets to the planning commission meeting. Gotcha. So you advertise for the planning, planning commission, commission and, for a week. No, it's, plan it's advertised for both Planning Commission and County Board three weeks in a row before it goes to Planning Commission and County Board. Okay, because that's kind of confusing to me. Well, and why I it's only one time for, the, I mean, why would it have to be advertised for the uh, County Commissioner's meeting if it hasn't been even brought to, to the Planning Board? Because it has to follow it, even though if they may continue it here, 
it'll still go on the county board agenda as a first reading um, to come back to, to come back to the planning commission and county board and can you cite me that ordinance where I can read it myself I'd have to after the meeting I can show you the in the zoning ordinance and some their state statutes under rezones thank you any further questions okay current recommendation is um, or Brittany do you have something else or nope I just didn't want to jump there uh, staff recommends approval of the ordinance amendment uh, OA 1801 and I'll move approval of that recommendation second motion in a second any further discussion seeing none all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed same sign item 18 Adam, or excuse me, item 18 kind of follows the same um, recommendations due to NEHA no longer providing certifications. It's to amend section 204J3P service providers O&M on-site wastewater treatment systems. And so we're just asking that they remove that requirement to pass a NEHA against certified test because it's no longer available for them to take. Um, and there is a couple wordsmithing things in here too. Um, on the first paragraph under proposed text, a comma after experimental and remove the comma after unconventional. Any further, any questions for Brittany? Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Rich. Um, in reading this and reading the, the recommended text here, it, my question is, what happens if we have one of these experimental systems and an O&M service provider installs it and then that company goes out of business? Who is, who's okay then to service it? Well, right now, um, we haven't had that happen. Um, they do have to be maintenance per manufacturer's specifications. So I think even if it's installed, um, those specifications would still stand over time. Um, there's one or two companies <coughs> that do a majority of the um, servicing on them. And it would depend, you know, most of them are an aeration type unit. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few that have like cartridges, like filter cartridges, but um, most of them, the people that have been trained to do them have done them consistently since I've been here for the most part. Um, I guess I'm just wondering on the requirements if you should um, leave yourself, uh, you know, or or approved something, something by, you know, staff uh, in case, because it looks to me like there's only one requirement then, right? Be a certified service provider by the manufacturer of the equipment to be serviced or maintained. And if that's no longer available, then you guys would be approving whether or not they could maintain it. Am I understanding that correctly? Or nobody would be able to maintain it <laughs> if you read That's it. That's my concern. Literally, sure. So I, I just think there should be a, okay. an II there, and I think that you guys could come up with a phrase there to say or, you know, recommended uh, maintenance approved by staff. And then they have to then uh, be one of these. Uh, um, they they have to have gone through what we what we passed in item seventeen, the continuing education or something. Those are my comments anyway. Okay. Two eighteen. Any further questions? I'm trying to think of a. I don't know if Michelle's she is, she's writing. Adds, oh, she can write right now. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Lauren. Just for curiosity, like how many units in the county do we have that fall under this criteria? Um, just a few? Um, no, we have one whole subdivision that's oh. just ATU units, uh, Canyon Springs. They're what kind of units? ATU units, so the advanced treatment units. Okay. So Canyon Springs, that whole subdivision. Um, that's off Nemo Road? Correct. Um, and that was put in as part of their planned unit development. It was part of their community drain field system and things that they had engineered and designed. Okay. Um, and then there's a few others. There's one, um, some in Silver City. There's some along Sheridan Lake Road. Okay. So, so Michelle's uh, service provider approved by the planning director or his or her designee for now. Is that and then what you're or looking after for? maintained. Yeah. So, 
Current recommendation recommendation is to approve the ordinance amendment 08-1802. We're going to add that. What is it going to be? Is it going to? I I. I I. And then an or after comma or after maintain. Okay. Can you read that so we all have that and again? Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. Sorry, Michelle, you took off with it. <laughs> a service provider approved by the planning director or his or her designee. Okay. Any further questions? If not, I would entertain a motion. It's so moved with the updates as stated. Okay. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Takes us to item 19, county board report. PJ County of the Director of Planning Department. County Board Report first item is the 2018 February Building Permit Report. Uh, single family homes are down 14% over this time last year. Um, however, we're looking at uh, garages and carports um, uh, up 33%. And, we're on 19. I'm sorry? You're on 21, aren't you? We're on 19, sorry. Oh, okay. 19. Well, let's yeah, go back a little bit. Report, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Not bad. Sorry. What, what were you reading? I totally just was. It's all right. I was reading off of this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, wait. wait I was like, wait, I was, wait, was getting my papers all set up. Right. And I'm like, Thank wait, you, Lori. Sorry. No problem. Um, all right. 19. County Board Report. The Board of Commissioners concurred with the Planning Commission's recommendation from the February 26, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Um, as far as Ordinance Amendment 1702, the mining ordinance, the second reading of the mining ordinance was approved on February 27th, 2018. All right. Um, any questions? No. All right. Item 20, items from the public. I don't see anybody in here, so I guess we can go to item 21. <laughs> item 21. Uh, items from South County well, Building Permit Report, deja vu. All right. Um, single family residences are down 14% over this time last year. Uh, garages and carports are up 33%, and residential additions like finished basements and extra rooms are down 33%. Um, if you'll notice uh, number 214CO, and CO standing for county, the other transient shelters, that's the uh, under canvas. That's just some of the tents that, that, that were approved under their conditional use permit. Um, we have um, probably another 70 plus from those that still have to get um, issued and have some septic things they have to work out before they're issued. So that's the conditional use permit for under canvas, the glamping. Okay. Mr. Okay. Chair. Go ahead. Um, so those, um, those are being installed now? No, they're not installed yet. Those were just some of the permits that were allowed. Oh, for the site. So they have to, I, I forget um, the conditions of that permit. Do they have to permit each individual structure? Correct. Oh, okay. Yep. And some have septics and some don't. They're, they have septics. They all have. The, I forget. <laughs> they're all, they're, yes and no. Okay. It's hard to say. There's, there's, there's 80 tents, 81 TPs, not, in a, not including the laundry, the kitchen, the dining hall. I mean, oh, that's right. Because there's some central facilities. Yeah. Know. There's almost 100 buildings. So I was curious. Oh, excuse Go me, ahead, Kat. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of curious about these two, so I, and I don't have the background, but what, what is this little tent Clamping? city? Oh, excuse me? The glamping, what this That's was, yes, I can yeah. go back to the conditional use permit. If you want me to pull it up, I can try and well, find just, it. No, just give me a little. It's something. basically designer camping. It's glamorous camping. Glamorous camping. Uh, this company under Canvas, most of their sites are in national parks. So basically take a five-star hotel bedroom, usually with the antiques, and put it into a specially made design tent. Oh, and, and where is this address located? This Southeast of Keystone. Southeast of Keystone. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> any any further questions, comments? All right. See a comprehensive plan update. Sure. Uh, Matrix Design Group will be here on uh, the week of March nineteenth. Uh, we have a meeting in the evening on March twentieth at six o'clock in Hill City at the High School Theater. One at the City of Wall at the Wall Community Center at six, and also on Thursday the twenty second in Rapid City at the Black Hills State University Rapid City Campus. Um, also, if you remember, the morning of March 20th is a Board of Commissioners meeting where Matrix will be here to uh, present uh, some of the findings that they've had so far. And also, if you have received the emails from the existing conditions report, uh, basically it allows the Planning Commission and the Board and the public to know uh, where we are as a county before now we're going to start 
changing things. So you kind of need that base of understanding before you move forward. So um, that's it for that. And I believe that the, the Planning Commission had also voted to have a quorum at the meeting on the 20th so we can advertise properly so we're not in violation of any open meeting laws. Who's going to be there? I know I'm going to be there. Um, Me, Lori. I intend Mark, to be there. Yeah, I intend to be there. Yeah. Sonny, you'll be there? I will be gone. You'll be gone. Do we know if Bill's planning on showing up too? Or? I, that one I don't know. I can find out for you though. Okay. Just so we know who all is going to be there. Uh, not knowing how that agenda is going to play out, they're looking at a 45 minute to an hour presentation slash Q&A. Um, they're going to try, the staff's going to try and get it earlier on the agenda, but it, it really depends on what items are on the agenda that day. So it'll be up to the, commission's off, the commissioner's office to determine that. Mark DeSanto, you're on over there. <laughs> <coughs> that meeting starts at 9 o'clock on the 20th. Um, item C, Mining Committee. Uh, actually, kind of covered that already with the County Board report. Um, item D, Special Animal Keeping Regulations Committee. It's uh, still meeting pr regularly, pretty much every other Monday. Uh, right now, they're working on intent and purpose of, of the committee to kind of narrow down, hopefully, uh, the conversation is very broad right now, and so Travis is looking for them to kind of narrow it down a little bit before we start moving forward. And I believe you put a deadline on the first draft. We did. We put a deadline for the first draft three weeks out from our last meeting. I think we're end of April, mid-April. You're yeah. looking to have your first With an draft. option to adjust if we need be, but that way we can try to get focused and figure out what we, how we want to move mm -hmm. forward. How many people it. are on your committee? Nine. Nine voting. Nine. Nine voting. Nine voting. I'm the only, uh, I would vote only if there's a tiebreaker. So. And just incidentally, I appreciate the link on the webpage to, to that committee. And, you know, because it lists the people there and the, the uh, meetings and so on. So I appreciate that. Sure. Any committee, it, whenever we have a committee, we do something like that because it cuts down a lot of the phone calls and emails yeah. that we get as long as we can keep it up to date, yeah. But thank you. Um, item E is the 2020 census. This hasn't been brought up for some time. Our office is the designated uh, ones in the county to uh, oversee the 2020 census. So this started about a year ago. Um, Frank, our GIS uh, guy, who was up here earlier for one of the layout plats and vacation of easements. Uh, we just got our documents in the mail uh, the other day from um, their main office. So he and I, basically he has to go through and personally verify all the addresses in the entire county and tell them where the discrepancies are and the information that they have. And it's no small task. <coughs> over 40,000 addresses. So he'll be pretty busy. We just want to let you guys know that we're working on that. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead, Lori. Do you guys actually, um, do you guys actually go out and do some of the survey stuff or you, you just do the background work for them to go ahead and do the census then? I forget. Well, no, we're not the ones that go door to door. Yeah, okay. No, we're you looking just... at GIS data. And, he's and then gonna... you forward that on to the census people, right? Yeah, they, they send us what they have from last time or with the most updated. Okay. Then he'll run an algorithm to kind of compare and contrast and come up with the differences. Huh. And then um, prepare a report and send it back. And there's a chain of custody on all the information. Everything has to be locked up when you're not using it. And only certain people can touch it because of the information that's in there. It's, uh, it's only once every 20 years, so we're okay <laughs> with that. <laughs> But uh, City of Rapids doing the same thing, and so are the other incorporated cities. Everybody's doing their part. Okay, yeah. thanks. But right. Nothing further. All right, item 22, items from the membership. Anybody have anything? Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Mark. Um, the concern was brought up to me by Ms. Mahali. I don't know if she worked it out with you or not, PJ, but uh, we, we continued um, without prejudice her application um, for the ordinance amendment. A continuance without prejudice, she wouldn't be charged again for that two hundred and twenty dollar fee. From my understanding, yep. so the board it back. Yeah, so with the applicant's concurrence, it was it was uh, Tina Malawi had sent in an ordinance amendment for something with the septic. I can't remember exactly. I haven't spoken to Tina about what the contents of her new amendment is. Okay, um, I was out of the office when she came in on on Friday, and the staff that was able to take care of her um, doesn't make those decisions of whether to take an application in after denial without prejudice or not. Because if it doesn't, if it's not the same or similar, then it's something new. And so then if it was something new, then all fees would be required. So it, again, I'd have to see actually what the application wording is. Um, I met with Ms. Malawi um, 
well, just uh, had about, I know, 10 minutes while Brittany was up here talking to see if she wanted to go outside and speak. And she said that she um, didn't have the time. And she, well, she didn't say she didn't have the time. She said she's going to be here till the end of the meeting so we can just talk afterwards. Okay. So, um, I just, again, I haven't seen the application to be able to determine one way or the other which way it's going to go. She brought it up to me as well. So, I was, you know, it was one of the yeah. questions I was going to ask. But a, a denial without prejudice is no, um, you don't need to redo the permit fee, but you do need to do the advertising. Right. And the, and the letters. Right. But yeah, so I guess that would be the biggest question is she shouldn't have to pay the actual, other than the application, fee. the application fee is the biggest question and concern. If it falls under, it stays within the denial without prejudice, yeah. Right. And if a government the, agency uh, was to bring it forward or staff, then there would be no fee anyway. So. Okay. Is that her? She's still here. Okay. All right. Any further questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Rich. I will not be here next week on the 20th for the, the commission meeting, and I will be gone on the 26th as well. Okay. Any other comments? All right. With that, final item is adjournment. I'd entertain so moved. A second. Motion is second. All in favor? <laughs> That's okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.